Welcome, bienvenue, welcome. My name is Carola and I moved to Paris in 2017. In today's video, we are going to meet another tour guide. We are going to meet Alison from Tower to Bridge Tours and she's going to show us a few sites in Paris. For example, the Eiffel Tower, Notre Dame, Pont Neuf and the Jardin de Tuileries. Hey, my name is Alison and I'm from Tower to Bridge Tours. I've been in Paris since 2016 and before I came here I was doing tours in the Napa and Sonoma wine country in California. So when I got to France I decided that I would continue my adventures and that's what I'm bringing you on today. This is my favorite tour that I do and it's called the Great Layover. Layover is a term that we use in the United States for the period of time in between two flights. So what I do is I go to the airport and I pick up my guests and I bring them directly to the Eiffel Tower because that's exactly what everybody wants to see when they come to France. After a tour of the city, I take them back to the airport and they're on to their next adventures. So one of the few things that's really interesting is that um, the tower itself is painted three different colors. The very top part is a darker bronze and then at the bottom is the lightest bronze with the made base bronze in the very middle. So uh, when I pick people up at the airport, they don't have a lot of time and they shouldn't have to wait around for things like tickets. So I make sure to have all of their metro tickets and their RER tickets available right from the very start. The other thing that I like to do as well is check their luggage in. It doesn't have to be checked into the actual airline. There is a storage facility at the airport where you can leave bags until you're able to come back for them. Um, also, if there's enough time during the day, I like to make a reservation for them for lunch. If they don't have a lot of time, we do a little grab-and-go situation where we're able to eat on a park bench and just have some Parisian sandwiches, one of our favorites. Ideally, we want six hours. Four hours can be done in a pinch. We could always work around things as well, like when people have a shorter layover. Their priority is always the Eiffel Tower. That's number one. Directly across from us, you can only see the very top of the building is uh, Musée d'Orsay. When people are coming here, if they don't have a lot of time for a museum, like the Louvre, which is like a full day commitment, then I recommend them to go over to Musée d'Orsay because it's something that you can do in just a couple of hours. Kitsune means fox. You'll be able to see that they have little fox logos all around. Yuzu is a, um, a citrus, a very small little citrus. Let's see. So it's kind of like jam. Almost. It's amazing. It's very, very good. Uh huh. Okay. I like to get it for my friends when I'm meeting them because that way I don't need to worry about if they need caffeine. A view of the Eiffel Tower behind you. <laughs> yeah, it's so delicious. Yeah. I've never had yuzu with honey, but yes. A new convert. Absolutely. So one of the things I wanted to show you is down this way is the, um, the obelisk for the Place de Concorde. And that actually is a gift from Egypt. It took three years to bring it over by canal and by, uh, by riverboat. Um, but eventually they got it here. And if you look right behind it, you could see the Arche de Triomphe. This is a smaller version of the Arche de Triomphe that's uh, behind us that we already saw. But it took too long to build that up in his own lifetime. So Napoleon built this small one because he wanted it to be reminiscent of the Italian victories where they would go through the streets and have like a big parade. And so his dream was always to go through the gates of, um, of the Arche de Triomphe to go under the arch and be celebrated. So um, the the main arch down there, Napoleon was never able to get into the arch itself. He was never able to go through there. To enter the Louvre, there's many different locations for entering. They all come down to the very bottom underneath the pyramid itself. But if you look over here, it says Le Carousel de Louvre. And that's actually a staircase that goes underground and gets you all the way over to the line to enter the Louvre without nearly as many people. So this is a great spot to know. 
I'll tell you a little funny story about the Mona Lisa. It started because there was an Italian worker who worked in the Louvre and he actually, they say, that he was um, a frame maker. And so on his last day of work, before he was going to leave uh, France and go back to Italy, he decided to bring back one of the beautiful artworks of Italy with him. And because he was a frame maker, he knew how to get the, um, how to get the picture out of the frame. And it's relatively small if you've seen it. So he's able to roll it up and put it into his bag. And so nobody knew. And because he had on the wor white workman's uniform, nobody stopped him. They thought that they, they thought it could have been him though. And so eventually they, uh, they went to his house and they searched, but nobody ever found it until he actually moved to Italy. And then a couple years later, he tried to sell the painting because he needed some money. And the art dealer recognized the painting, turned him in. The Mona Lisa is so popular that even when it was stolen, people lined up just to see the empty spot on the wall where she was hung. So you can see we're approaching Yenna, and Yenna's stop is actually blinking, so you know that that's the next stop that we're going to get off at. One of the things that's kind of cool, too, is you look at these, it tells you where your connections are. So there, that's the Rossi bus, RER. So this one will actually go to, um, go to the other airport, Orly Airport. But there's the one, that's the one that we're gonna take today at Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And then you can see up here in brown, it says Palais de Ponce. And that's like um, a monument. That's something that you would wanna see when you're in town. So any of those are gonna be in brown. When you're buying tickets, it'll ask you what zone you want. You can see the numbers here. This is zone one, two, three, four, five. So here's Airport Charles de Gaulle. That's where we came from. So you can see that that is in the fifth zone. And so it costs more money to take the RER into the center of town. Then over here, you'll see that there's another map and then this map is the Cartier that we're in right now. So this is the general area of where we're at, and it tells you all the things of interest that you need to see. Like you remember I said in brown are things that are important to know in that area. And it also helps with the doors, uh, like oh, yes. yeah, exit three, this exit Exactly, five. exactly. And, and then you'll see on the signs, it'll tell you exactly where the exit is that you want. See, yeah. this is three, four, and five. As we go through, you'll be able to see it has one, two, three, four, five. And then again, there's your point of interest is in brown. Now that we're on line one, you'll be able to see that here at Chatelet has all of the lines because that's the center of town. And there's Charles de Gaulle on the RERB. So um, RERs are hollow. Metro is solid. Metro solid, solid. So we have metros on this side, we have RERs on this side, and again, there's another point of interest, Le Marais. That's where I live. <laughs> In front of us is Mazarine, and that's actually the location of where the immortals work. The immortals are not uh, vampires, <laughs> even though it sounds something like that, but they're in charge of the French dictionary, and so every year they decide what words are gonna be added to the dictionary. Uh, they have to, a lot of times the words are English words, and so then they have to add whether it's going to be le or la. <laughs> so the most famous controversy was the iPhone. So the iPhone they made masculine, but the iPad they made feminine. So it's le iPad, le iPhone. You can see the faces on the bridge. But the funny story about that is that originally when they opened the bridge, people were very, very scared of it. They'd never seen a bridge that was made out of stone before. And so what the king did was he had a huge opening party and he brought all the different people, all the royalty and the merchants and invited them. Now in that time, if the king invited you to a party, you show up to the party. 
And that way it, it got rid of any of people's fears that they had of the bridge because they got to actually walk on the bridges itself. Now the funny thing is, and this is kind of a, a, a wise tale, an old wise tale, is that he had artists sketching just like you would find at a party today, like a cartoonist. And they were going around the party and they were drawing all the different faces of the different people. And then afterwards, they brought the, uh, they brought the paintings, the drawings to um, stone workers and they would make the faces all distorted and funny like little grotesques. And then they put all the pictures of all the people in stone on the sides of the bridge. So they were immortalized, but not in the way that they want to be. Um, over here is where the mint is. That's where they make the money. Nowadays, they have a pretty decent, very interesting uh, museum that has traveling shows. And some of them are quite modern, so it's not necessarily the kind of museum you would expect in Paris. Henry was born Protestant, but in order to take the throne, he needed to be Catholic. So he actually converted to Catholicism. And then when he uh, became king, he reverted back to being a Protestant when he went ahead and signed the Edict de Nantes, and that allowed for religious freedom. But that wasn't very popular at the time, and so a religious zealot actually did murder him. So we're currently standing at the last stop, Notre Dame. We're in front of Notre Dame right now, and one of the things I wanted to point out to you is this guy right here. Can you see his face? Well, it's not where it should be. His head should be right there. But this is uh, Saint-Denis, Saint Denis. And he was the first Archbishop of Paris, and he was uh, unfortunately lost his head. So I can tell you more about that on our Montmartre tour as well, because that's where he actually did lose his head because this was the time of the Romans and they didn't really believe in the Catholic Church at that time. So he got a, he got a bad rap on that one. Up here, you can see St. Michael, San Michel. He weighs the souls against the devil to decide who goes to heaven and who goes to hell. And you can see that this panel represents Judgment Day. And so even the dead are coming up to be judged. This side would be heaven, this side would be hell. When the church itself is open, you enter on the side of hell. You enter on the damned side, and you come out through this side over here, which is the side of the saved. So how can people reach you? They can easily reach me at www.towertobridgetours.com. So if you like the video, then please give it a thumbs up and comment down below and you'll find all the information to Alison's homepage in the description below and how to book her, how to contact her. And let us know if you like the tour and if you consider booking it, if you're in uh, Paris layover the next time. And thank you for being my tour guide today. Thank you, it was a real pleasure and I hope that you enjoyed the video. And bye. Down on every Paris street, Always something new to meet Paris stands for all to see With her ancient history